مرحبا أهلا وسهلا أنا اسمي لورا أنا في الأمريكا ولكن الآن أنا في بلد سنغال هناك قناتي في اليوتيوب لعاب مع لورا واليوم أريد أن أتكلم عن كيف تتكلم اللغة الصعبة Hello everyone, my name is Laura. I am an American who is currently in Senegal and this is my channel Languages with Laura and today I want to talk about how to learn hard languages or how to make hard languages easy to learn. journey I so I'm a native English speaker but the first couple languages I learned were um, Spanish and French and so they aren't really considered hard to learn from an English language point of view um, but I have studied Arabic and I've also studied Russian and a little bit of Mandarin and so those are considered much harder to learn languages especially from an English speaker point of view so like my Arabic is a little shaky but I'm learning it <laughs> um, versus my Russian is like a little bit better and like I said Mandarin I studied it for a year and I would really love to jump back into it but I have really enjoyed studying these hard languages and I think they're definitely very possible to learn from any language background so here are here is my advice tips and tricks on how to learn languages that are harder for you or harder from your native language because every language is a different amount of hard depending on what language you're coming from your experience your motivation etc and so forth so what might be hard for me might not be hard for someone else and vice versa what's hard for someone else may not be uh, may be very hard for me so this is all based off of personal experience learning arabic and russian mostly First thing I would say is if this is your first language that you're learning, especially on your own, so it would be your second language, maybe don't go for something extremely hard unless you have a particularly high motivation, like you have a very good reason for doing it and you know you have good resources. The only reason I say that is because as you learn another language and then even another one, language learning in general gets easier. I am so incredibly thankful that I learned both Spanish and French before attempting Arabic because that was my first like hard language that I started to learn and I am so incredibly thankful that even though Spanish and French were much easier to learn, I still got a basis understanding of language and how language can be different between them and that really helped me understand certain concepts in Arabic especially because also Arabic has a lot of influences on Spanish and I didn't know that until I started attending Arabic classes so I would just say if there is a difficult language that you want to learn but you don't have a lot of experience learning languages maybe shift your focus but that again, not the case for everyone. If you, like I said, have good motivation, have good resources, oh, go for it. Even just learn more about your native language, like the nitty gritty stuff. And then even that will help you learn a harder language a little bit better. So just having a good concept of language linguistics in general will be very helpful, especially if you're doing it on your own, learning like the phonetic alphabet and the, like the global alphabet and things like that will make learning any language a lot easier. So some things I already mentioned would be having a good motivation to do it because when you're learning a difficult language it can be very disheartening if you're stumbling, if you're struggling, but if you have something to motivate you to keep going, keep pushing, keep trying, that's going to be extremely helpful and having good resources, having something that you can learn from that fits your learning style as well as something that you can do passive learning so having active learning and passive learning resources whether it's music tv shows movies audiobooks podcasts whatever and then active learning can be podcasts or textbook or online lessons apps whatever just making sure you have a good amount of resources because especially with some of the harder languages, especially if they're not very popular in your native language or whatever language you're learning from, 
that can just make it all the harder because there are some concepts that like will be written out at a textbook that I just could not understand but watching a video of someone explaining it to me or listening to a podcast makes me understand it so much better. It works for my learning style better. So to be able to have the textbook to have those exercises to practice and be able to correct myself, but also having another resource to help me understand some of those harder concepts are very important. Another tip I would recommend is to do a little bit of research into your target language. Know what about it is considered hard versus what is considered easy. For example, when I was learning Arabic at first, I didn't know that the plural system in Arabic was going to be fairly difficult for me because it doesn't follow a specific structure or system like there are rules but there are so many exceptions to the rules and so many differences for each word that it would have been a lot easier for me to just memorize the plural of a word along with the original word so originally in my college Arabic courses our textbook did not introduce plurals until year two until we were at an intermediate level and then we had to go back and relearn and I was trying to teach us how to pluralize words through a system when really what would have worked best for me is what my current Arabic textbook, um, because I'm going back and learning a specific dialect versus before I only learned Fasa in college. So the textbook that I have now has the plural from the very beginning with every single word so I can just memorize them together. And it is so much easier on my brain and so much better for my self-confidence and self-esteem to just memorize like the, the word for book, kitab, and the pluralized word for books. Like to, I cannot describe, but I had no idea that was going to be something difficult. I just knew that pronunciation was going to be difficult because there are, when you transliterate Arabic into English, for example, there are kind of two H sounds. One is like a very frontal, small H versus one is way back and it's very deep H. And so I knew that that was going to be difficult, but I was ready to accept the challenge. And because of that, I'm much more comfortable practicing and even just making mistakes. I'm much more comfortable doing that because I know it's hard. And Eric has that with other letters too, like with that and saw that and thought that and thought. Like, and even with the ein and the rein, I still can't do those sounds and I've been studying Arabic for a few years, but I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I can still be understood and I'm still trying my best to master those sounds. But knowing that that was hard going in just was so much better on my self-confidence and self-esteem versus if it was something that caught me off guard, I didn't know it was going to be hard. That's, that's where it gets a little bit tricky. So I, I highly recommend doing research on the language itself to know what's going to be tricky versus what's not. And I'll say with, Arab, or with Mandarin, obviously what was going to be tricky was writing characters and tones. Well, I got a really good handle on the tones pretty early on because I had been listening to Mandarin for years before that, just through music, through international students who would call home and I would get to hear parts of the conversation, either because it's in the kitchen or they introduced me to their family or whatever. Um, so I was able to really listen and pick up on the tones that way. And then with the writing system, um, my Mandarin teacher taught us, you know, the correct way to write and it's top to bottom, left to right of a character. And she was completely right where once you get, once you know the beginning of each character, if you do it enough times, you're going to pick up muscle memory. You're going to know, I want to write wu shi and you're going to know, okay, wu, wu, you need to start this way and then goes down. And then it just continues on. I don't even have to think about it anymore. Even right now, having not spoken Mandarin in six years, I can still picture the beginnings of certain characters. And if I try to write them, I'm not too far off from how they're actually written. They're not near as neat as they used to be. And I might make a small mistake here or there, but for the most part, I still remember how to write certain characters because of how much she drilled it into me. And so then the hard things became not that hard anymore. Third tip I have is to pace yourself. Watch your timing. 
when you are coming up onto something that is difficult, whether or not you know it's difficult for you, take your time with it. You know, obviously don't rush through it. It's pretty difficult to rush through it, but don't get stressed out if it's taking you longer to understand or to master than you expected or than you hoped. You need to be flexible with that kind of thing so that you're not discouraged and then you can actually focus your energy on learning it rather than focus your energy on stressing about it. So being able to get to a unit where you have something difficult, maybe like for Russian, learning cases was pretty difficult. And so whenever I came to a new case, you know, I would sit down, just try to understand the idea behind it, and then start picking up little details here, like uh, memorize the endings for just the possessives, moi versus maya, mayo, whatever and then just slowly add on to it until it made sense or until I was comfortable with it. And to really, like once you do think you understand it, still go back to it. Because my thing, and this is something with everything, you know, spaced repetition is a really good way, method of learning something. It's good for our brains. Spaced repetition, but also just keep reviewing it because I'll think, oh, I've got this one day and then two, three days later, nope, it's gone. Or, yeah, I'm making a mistake on something. I didn't make a mistake before. So just really take your time to review, make sure you're comfortable, make sure you're solid in it before you move on. But also if you need to take a break, like if you try and you're just struggling, there is no shame in taking a couple days off, maybe a week off from your regular language lessons to just kind of reset yourself, don't stress, you know. Language learning is a long process, so you need to let yourself relax a little bit and take a break, especially if something's difficult. But the key with that is to not give up, don't get discouraged, don't go on a break and then just never come back because it's too hard. So being able to balance that, being able to pace yourself. And then tip number four is to make sure you're learning the hardest thing in the easiest way. So, you know, being able to break something down, like I said, make sure you have the best resource for learning it. And if you think you have a good resource for learning it, still look for others because you never know if there's going to be something easier. Like I said, learning things from a textbook, I love learning things from a textbook, I truly do. But if I come across something difficult, I need other ways to learn it. I need other ways to practice it. Or even with writing the Mandarin characters, I would not have known how much easier it would be to memorize them were it not for my teacher. And that could be really difficult when you're learning something on your own, but it's still this idea of, you know, bringing variety to make sure that what you are learning is an easy method even for the difficult things. And again, that can also very much come with if you're an auditory learner versus a visual learner. Make sure you know how you learn. I am very much a visual and do it myself, so I need to watch someone do it and then repeat after them or practice. Um, but some people are more auditory. They just need to listen to it and that's good enough for them. So just make sure you know how you learn. And also don't try to practice all hard things at once. Even if like, if you are following a textbook or a video series or whatever, and they've got one thing after another that's difficult, take a break and do something easy. You know, if you can learn a difficult thing and then an easy thing and then a difficult thing and then an easy thing. And again, I'm trying to be general for any language for anyone that is considered difficult, but I only have my own experiences. So for me, learning, Plurals in Arabic was hard. Okay, well then we'll just do a conjugation because I actually don't find conjugation to be that hard in Arabic, but that is mostly because of my previous experience with Spanish and French and things like that where conjugation is very nitty gritty. It's quite a bit harder. Um, and then I can get into case endings for Arabic because those are a little bit like, oh, because you don't think of Arabic as being a case language like you do German and Russian. But there are still little case endings that my professor hinted at at one point and I was like, okay, I'm not ready for that. I need to learn something easy a minute. 
and then I'll go back into it or maybe just take a break with like a vocab list or just something easy to not stress out and to keep that pacing. And then my final tip is to be focus your passive learning when you're learning something difficult. So I've talked a little bit about active learning versus passive learning. Active learning is when you're sitting down trying to study something new, like being very intentional about it. And passive learning is kind of more of a, a practice, relaxed, you know, it could be watching TV shows, listening to music, whatever. You're, you're not putting that much energy into it, but it's still getting you to practice the language, think about the language. And so if you are actively learning something difficult, find passive ways to review it or to see it being used so that you can kind of understand it within context. A little bit better because if you can understand something with within context that's going to be huge because context when learning languages is such an important thing because if you see a sentence and you don't know a word or two in the sentence you can probably still understand it based on context so if you can do that with the grammar you can understand the context of when this difficult thing is being used through passive learning it's going to be a lot easier to be able to practice it and use it for active learning so those are all my tips shukran thank you so much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up comment down below what were some things in your target languages that were hard so that if somebody is also learning that language they can either relate or they can uh, do that little bit of research before going into it i'd love to hear from you all um, and be sure to subscribe. I post language learning content as well as travel content on this channel and I'm doing quite a bit of traveling this summer, but I will still have language learning content mixed in with the travel videos. Like this, thumbs up, all that stuff, subscribe. I have other social medias linked down below that you can follow me on. Um, shukran and masalama.